because then Bravo like looked at it and they were like, yeah, you know, the people who watch our show aren't gonna like feel bad for Sir Ant. <laughs> you know what I mean? The fact that a big tall building like that is up and nothing is selling, there's other buildings that are like that, which means that there is just, there's so much inventory that's out there that everybody's competing with everywhere. I mean, that neighborhood and everywhere else, right? So there's a lot of, and the good thing and the bad thing about New York, unlike let's say Canada, right? Like in Toronto, you can't just build a building because you want to. You have to get approval from the government, which is why when buildings do get approved to go up, they sell out in a heartbeat because there's so much demand. Here, anyone can build anything if they have the money and then people build too much and the demand always stays the same. So, you know, like they built this whole building for nobody. I mean, listen, small units will absorb anywhere. Like the studios and one bedrooms here, you know, they, those, you have those buyers all over the world. But once you go into larger apartments, why does somebody need a two, three or four bedroom apartment? Mm -hmm. Probably not just for themselves. So then who's going to buy that? Mm -hmm. And then figuring out who that demographic is, why would they live on 53rd street? Why wouldn't they just go to the Upper East Side or go further south to a more residential location? You know, especially New Yorkers. Like New Yorkers don't want to live where they work. <laughs> I met a broker yesterday who said hi to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed up an apartment with him last night. He's a really good guy. I like him. Yeah. We got drinks once. Nice. He just like looked at me and he was like, Joey Laresca. I was like, <laughs> Ryan Serhant. What, what is happening? Is this like word association? I don't get it. We can. We can do the same thing we did last time and like walk down 42nd Street in the snow if you're down for that, if it's not bad for your camera. Holy man. <laughs> this guy, you should, you should see who's behind the lens here. Say we have somebody else um, who really wants to see 443, but they need to not be able to yep. see into the windows. It's fine, these girls don't have cars. They just need to be able to bring their drivers in and get out without the paparazzi there. And so between now and the first week of March, we need to get him data and an analysis of what's coming to Brooklyn, what unit size is. We gotta figure out what we want the unit mix to be and figure out what the absorption is gonna be. kind of a finder keeper doer, which is being your own CFO, COO, and COO of your own business and your own brand. It's follow, It's the three Fs, which are follow up, follow through, and follow back, right? Which is like, I even, when I talk about it the last time, I even talked about 868 Lorimer, right? And just following up and staying on top. And then there's a building that, you know, it's a new development, great for our 2017 numbers. And it just came through from follow up, right? And it was, that's how it works. To get a little makeup, you know, cover all this. Oh, how are you? I'm good. I would turn my head all the way around if it was physically possible. Don't worry, we know the back of your head oh, by now. Really? No one else has this kind of salt and pepper in this room? Nobody else has what you have on. Good, how are you? Did you watch us dancing in there? No, no, I wasn't I looking up. I watched you. Oh, okay. Well, you were dancing? Yeah, they is that a, is that a new dancing. segment? No. Uh, it should be a new segment. The cameraman just put on Rick James, give it to me, baby. And oh, we nice. just went bonkers. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, I gotta subscribe. Are we yeah. on it? Yes, you are. You're, the, you're now the star. <laughs> are we on it? <laughs> Say hello, Sherry Love. Jesse's on the floor. Is that how they announce you? Do they, when you go home, is your girlfriend like, Jesse's Hume? Jesse's here. So how's the vlog? It's great. Wave, oh, wave hello. Yeah, wave hi. Vlogging right now. Vlogging you. Or like it's like inside your life. You're not kidding when they say it's like happening now. Stand yeah. By. Three bed, two bath, seventeen hundred square feet. How's the vlog? Wait. I don't know. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Welcome back. You ever wonder what it would be like to have a celebrity as your landlord? Well, now you can find out. And if you have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to spare on rent, could happen to you. Well, Million Dollar Listing Star and Daily Mail TV correspondent Ryan Serhant 
is here to fill us in on all the celebrities that ran out their digs, and I'm being told by our director that we're going to start again. And you can see that with all the work she's put into it. It's got high vaulted beam ceilings, a huge open chef's kitchen. Beautiful. Yeah, a beautiful fireplace. You know, the architecture I think is is really, really stunning, especially for this area. Market for rent for twenty seven thousand five hundred. And her neighbors are Harry Styles, Meg Ryan, Jessica Beal, Justin Timberlake, Blake Lively, Ryan Reynolds, and the list just goes on and on and on. Okay. Maybe one day Jesse Palmer. Uh, it's need more zeros. I will Four bring zero. you there. I'm going to yeah. you know, let me just show it to you. And, it's and important. Ryan Saran already has two places in the building. No, I don't. <laughs> I have one. So I think that empathy is important as an actor anyway, right? Because you have to be able to listen and you'll never get something out of the person you're talking to unless you can put yourself in their shoes. And so as a salesperson, your ability to listen and to understand what people are saying to you and to ask the right questions and to kind of feel what they're going through is the only way you're ever going to get a deal done. Because I think as a teenager, I know I did, I stressed about everything, I worried about everything, and it's not the end of the world. You know, knowing, and then knowing too that everything is not gonna work out the way you think it is, it's actually gonna work out better. Because I thought I was gonna become an actor and just do that and be in theater and do all that, but then only by quitting acting and becoming a hand model and then getting into real estate to pay my rent did I get back in front of a camera and do what I wanna do all the time anyway. Do it all the time. You know, the minute you stop, someone else is going to do it faster and better. So you just have to be relentless and just work, not stop, because eventually everyone else will slow down and you'll be there just to pass them.